What if the moon didn't exist? Although the sun contributes to Earth's tides, the Earth would experience half the tides, and its days would be shortened by several hours due to a lack of tidal friction. A much harsher climate would make it much more difficult for life to survive, as the planet wobbled far more violently on its axis. How the moon was formed has been a topic of much debate. Evidence from the Apollo 11 1969 landing on the moon soon made researchers realize old theories had to be discarded. The scientists began to envision a hot, violent formation for the moon's origin. A new theory, named the Giant Impact Theory, in which the early Earth was smashed into by another planet-sized object named Theia, was created. There have been many variations on and much refinement of the giant impact theory since then, and it has become the most widely accepted. Large impacts are thought to have been common in the chaotic final stage of rocky planet formation. It is also believed that the impact that formed the moon may have been the last collision of such massive scale in the inner solar system. Cameron and Canop show in simulations that the collision and the ejection of large quantities of material into space would have happened in approximately a day's time, and the actual amalgamation of this material would have taken only about a hundred years. Since lunar rock samples have been dated to be around 4.4 billion years old, the impact is predicted to have taken place within about a hundred million years of the Earth's formation. It is remarkable that the moon which has stabilized the tilt axis of Earth's spin axis, making it favorable to life, came about at just the right time in Earth's growth process. All variants of the giant impact theory can explain. The Moon's very small iron core, with it being formed mostly from the mantles of Theia and the early Earth. The presence of large cores in the inner planets, as well as many large meteorites, can be seen as a signature of massive bodies that formed in the inner portion of our solar system. Because of their large, high-mass cores, the four inner planets' densities are much higher than the moon's, implying that it did not form in the same accretionary process as the inner planets. According to Ward and Brownlee, the dense iron cores of the Earth and Theia merged as they collided, and mantle ejected from both bodies, which lacks iron, is what formed the moon, providing an explanation for the moon's lack of iron. Further confirmation for the moon's small core was provided by interpreting seismic data collected by seismic sensors left on the moon's surface by Apollo astronauts. Four seismometers were deployed by NASA between 1969 and 1972, and these instruments collected data until 1977. Since the core's size and density would affect the length of time it would take for a moonquake to travel through it, researchers were able to determine the core's size. Another interesting aspect of the moon's low density is the fact that it matches the density of the Earth's mantle rock. In fact, rocks from the Earth and moon share virtually identical isotopic content, distinct from that of all other bodies in the solar system. This is what made scientists believe that the moon was made from material from the planet. According to simulations, a low-speed collision in which a Mars-sized protoplanet grazes the early Earth would produce a massive molten disk which would rotate rapidly around the planet until the moon condensed. This simulation's prediction of a low iron content, lack of volatiles, and high angular momentum all agree with observations. More support for the giant impact theory comes from the higher abundance of isotope tungsten-182 on the moon compared to Earth's mantle. Tungsten, which is a siderophile, binds iron and hence would be expected to travel to Earth's iron-rich core. Yet there's an excess of the isotope in the Earth's crust and mantle. Suggesting that a late veneer of collisions from space deposited it. This would have happened after the giant impact that formed the moon and hence predicts different concentrations of tungsten 182 for the Earth and Moon, which is the case. There are several arguments against the giant impact theory. Simulations predict that at least 60% of the material that formed the Moon comes from Theia. Problematic due to other bodies in the solar system being characterized by their own unique chemical compositions. If the Moon was mostly made of material from Theia, then its composition must differ from Earth's. However, lunar rock samples with titanium, silicon, and neodymium, as well as isotopic ratios varying at most a few parts per million from the Earth's, contradict these models. For the impact's ejector ratio to a more of Earth's mantle than Theia's, the impact would have to happen at a higher velocity, which would result in an angular momentum inconsistent with observations. There are two possible ways to explain these models. One changes the size of the impactor to either the size of the Earth 
or smaller than Mars, in order to predict the lunar geochemical composition more accurate to observations, with compositions more similar to the silicate Earth. However, this amendment contradicts today's values of the Earth-Moon system's angular momentum, which would have to be about three times larger. Simulations from Master Bueno Batisti's group's 2015 publication provide another possible rebuttal to this counter-evidence to the giant impact theory. They found a 10 times higher likelihood than previously estimated for the compositions of two colliding planet-sized bodies to be similar. In around 20 to 40 percent of simulations, one rocky planet had a composition similar to its previous impacting protoplanet. The research also predicts that the composition of planets depends on the amount of heat they received from the Sun, with further planets being more likely to retain a heavy oxygen isotope. Since collisions are more likely between planets with similar orbits, a collision pair with similar composition might not be very rare at all. The multiple collisions theory suggests that the moon was formed from a number of moonlets, each of which was formed thanks to about 20 impacts from moon to Mars-sized objects. The moonlets would accrete from the smaller debris disks discharged by each collision. This theory's advantage is that simulations predict a larger portion of the moon's material coming from Earth's mantle. Yet, while it comes closer to explaining the moon's composition than the giant impact theory, it doesn't fully account for it. However, advocates of the theory say that if multiple bodies contribute to the formation of the moon, their unique chemistries will even out and be masked. Another upside to this theory is it can account for the Earth-Moon system's angular momentum if you add several glancing blows to the low obliquity collisions that provide the actual material for the moon's formation. However, models show that approximately 20 collisions would be required for the moon at its current mass and with the required angular momentum to form. This number only stands under the assumption that, following the accretion of a new moonlet from the disk of collision ejecta, the moonlet would travel further from the Earth and merge perfectly with the larger, growing moon. With imperfect merging, and especially if some moonlets are lost, the number of required impacts greatly increases. The more collisions are required to form the moon, the less likely this scenario is compared to the giant impact theory. Another theory for the moon's formation is the capture theory, which states that the moon was formed elsewhere in the solar system, possibly even around a different planet, and then the Earth's gravity reeled it in. This is unlikely due to the similarity in geochemistry of the Earth and moon, specifically their oxygen isotope ratios, which are virtually identical, suggesting that they were formed from the same pool of raw material. The fission theory is another proposed possibility for the moon's formation. According to this theory, the moon was formed when the Earth, still in a molten state and spinning fast, ejected a huge amount of molten rock. A study from 2010 found that the superconcentration of radioactive elements in the Earth at the time might have been enough to create a natural nuclear explosion and produce a moon-sized piece of rock to orbit the planet. One discarded theory is the theory of co-formation, in which the Earth and the Moon formed at the same time from the dust and gas of the same portion of the protoplanetary disk. Although this theory explains the similar isotopic chemistry of the Earth and its natural satellite, it is incapable of accounting for the Moon's small iron core or the Earth-Moon system's angular momentum. Another rejected theory is that of colliding planetesimals. In this proposed theory, the moon was formed when dust from colliding planetesimals was accreted. This theory also cannot explain the similar geochemistry between the Earth and moon. The giant impact theory is still the most accepted explanation for the formation of the moon. Although other proposed theories can account for most physical and chemical observations of the Earth-Moon system, they all struggle to show how the Earth and Moon came to have such similar compositions or their current angular momentum. The multiple collisions theory comes closest, however, it is much less likely to have occurred than the giant impact theory. The Apollo missions have been critical in shaping the currently most accepted theory, both with rock samples and with seismic data. Perhaps future missions will gather further evidence that will allow for further refinement of the giant impact theory or the dawn of a new hypothesis altogether.